poof, we have grown solar panels and uh, quickly did we grow them. Uh, last night a couple of guys were off uh, dropping off a uh, scar lift and uh, today uh, they're actually all done. Mains and panels and everything are up and actually still operational even though they're just barely still getting sunlight. Uh, so let's uh, have a bit of a closer look. Oh, there we are, it's uh, rather difficult for me to actually get up and uh, get any good footage of them because uh, I'm not even going to attempt to climb up that ladder with a camera in hand. But rest assured, there are 18 uh, Emery Solar uh, 365 watt panels on my barn now. I've done a pretty good job putting everything down. The rails are extremely well mounted with eight big bolts holding each of the uh, rails in place in many places and all the wires, wires are neatly tied up. I'm happy with this work. I think this is going to last a good while. So the wiring comes round. Down there goes along the roof of the uh, barn. I actually the installers were a bit meh, they'd actually left all the wiring exposed there, so I took the opportunity myself to go up in the sky lift and put some uh, proper nitto tape on the wiring there, so it's not uh, going to get fried in the sunlight. There's still a little tiny bit of exposed wiring in the top there where the pipes split, but that's not an issue because uh, it's so high up it's never going to see any sunlight. Also put some tape right in the corner there because that's still so far down that it might get uh, somewhat some bathed over the years and I intend for this system to last. So all of this stuff has uh, received some beautiful warning stickers. That says uh, DC Central uh, energized parts cannot be isolated and uh, warring uh, go comes from pipe there and uh, goes into the DC box and uh, I stuck my nose in here as well while they were working uh, because they just uh, wrote the wires uh, straight out of this uh, with uh, no nothing covering it. Uh, I took it apart and uh, put nitto tape on this and also attached it to the wall properly. So we have the two uh, solar connectors there one of them is positive and one is negative and this is the ground going in next to the ground there and from them, from there on I did just go through the magic of a box and down into the ground and uh, down inside the house uh, there's actually remarkably little difference uh, aside from maybe another sticker there another sticker there uh, and a bit of cleaning up of the wiring and some extra fan noise so the black and white wires, that are my nice double insulated uh, solar wires carrying the high voltage DC and they go into uh, MPPT tracker 1 there on the bottom of the uh, big inverter and uh, since we still have a little bit of sunlight left uh, you can see all our cute little symbols on the LCD there so we've got uh, battery, we've got utility, we've got uh, battery DC-DC going into the switchover going to the DC-AC going to the power, powering the house and we also have the uh, photovoltaics going to some switchover thing, going to the MPPT tracker, going to another switchover, going to the DC-AC, going to the house. So as you can see I'll set this up to run with uh, uh, batteries as the primary power source so we're actually off grid now and uh, I'm not entirely sure actually how it's going to behave if we uh, uh, shut off our Turva Kutkin which is our uh, main uh, safety breaker for the uh, M for the inverter so this is incoming main so let's see what happens again we have the terrible light fixture there which is gonna uh, make noise if there's any interruption so I expect it to maybe blink yeah, it blinked, there was a small interruption. Now we're on pure inverter, uh, which uh, I'm very happy 
that it seems to be actually running in grid time mode right now when it's uh, set up like this. I hope that it's going to keep running in grid time mode even after the sun sets because when I've been testing this thing, uh, running it uh, on only batteries, uh, it's been it's been running like a UPS. It has not been running uh, in grid time mode, so it's been completely isolated from the grid, uh, and that has some issues. It's not running super efficiently, and uh, it, it it doesn't have a completely perfect output waveform. It has a bit of a tendency to make some noises, like my transformers will make a bit of. Uh, it, it's an odd noise that comes and goes but you don't get with the grid. It's still cleaner than the power grid here but it's a different kind of distortion. So in just a second it's going to tick back over to the grid. There we go. So what we're running now. And now we're back to running uh, grid tide. Beautiful. No worries. So yeah what more. Uh, I'm, I have to have all these uh, PV warning signs on all the centrals which might be energized uh, from the uh, uh, solar panel system and then since they don't have any stickers for this I just added a little battery thing there with an inverter. Uh, so yeah, uh, I still have one uh, lead of these that's just completely unused since I'm still running the small system of the uh, old wiring which is just kind of placed there. So at some point I might uh, hook this up for, to the small system or I'll make another system. It's just an extra wire for the time being but I've shorted together over here to uh, make sure there's absolutely no voltage in it because we need to keep in mind both of these wires end up in the same switch in the DC box on the barn and if we have like moisture ingress we could get 800 volts of DC from this seeping through the switch into this making these ends absolutely lethal because the inverter has uh, the negative side of the black and white lead referenced to neutral which is referenced to ground so we could essentially have ground in this metal ground in that pipe and 800 volts in the red lead there and that is just unacceptable we cannot have that so with a jumper Sitting like that, uh, it's uh, guaranteed to be at uh, zero volts potential all the time. <sighs> I've also kind of cleaned up, put the cover back on the switch. Uh, everything's good to go. The inspector guy was perfectly happy with all my work. He had nothing to say. He was uh, happy with the quality. He uh, was uh, courteous enough not to give me any uh, criticism for that mess there, that's just the low voltage solar panel wiring so you no know, one really cares but it looks bad. Uh, and I've set up this uh, terrible old Windows 8 tablet thing uh, as a bit of a management PC for the big inverter while I'm toying around with the settings and stuff uh, because uh, it basically only speaks Windows, you can't have like in an open WRT writer doing the thing, it has to talk to its own applications on a Windows PC, which is a bit meh, but we may do. I uh, might get a Modbus card or something for it sometime in the future. And here's the application, and as you can see, our data log there is telling us about our first 3 kilowatt hours, or 2.8 kilowatt hours that we've produced thus far, so that's not a lot of money due to the whole the situation with energy prices being very low at the moment, but it is evidence that everything is working just fine. Uh, so I have uh, dug through some uh, manuals and stuff, and I have this uh, pretty much dialed in right now. Uh, that's going to be have to be some tweaking going on with this uh, as uh, I figure the system out, figure out what quirks out and what to do. So we haven't done all the paperwork to feed back into the grid yet so I'm running grid tie with no feedback and uh, uh, but it's basically an off-grid system that's just running in parallel with a the grid uh, there, there's uh, zero milliamps going into the grid back through a meter uh, an online UPS basically uh, and uh, uh, this is my charging setup so 
and we're only charging the batteries from the photo photovoltaic panels that we are supplying our loads loads from primarily from the PVs, then the batteries, then the grids. Uh, so the grid is our backup if uh, we're on out of battery. And uh, if uh, the song goes down, we still go battery and then we uh, take from the grid uh, once the battery is uh, discharged to whatever level we choose to set. I haven't really specified all those voltages yet. I've been reading the uh, manual for my batteries to do everything right. Uh, but we can specify all that stuff in this screen reasonably well. Uh, there's something I haven't managed to figure out, and that's uh, uh, how long it uh, does the bulk charging for a battery for. Uh, that I haven't been able to find any settings for that, so uh, we're going to have to figure that out. And uh, I've been reading the manual for the these batteries and the Sonnenshine A600 solar batteries and we, they recommend a charging voltage even higher than that, uh, over 58 volts uh, for the bulk charging stage for the A600 solars. I don't want to go that high with my old batteries, I've uh, taken it down, so this is equivalent to 14.4 volts uh, on a normal 12 volt battery and a float charge of I believe 13.8. Uh, uh, it is normal to have reasonably high charge voltages in a solar system compared to a float charging system like a UPS because the batteries, uh, if you don't have a very high uh, charge voltage, the battery will uh, slowly lose uh, state of charge. It'll settle at like 70% state of charge in normal operation, which will damage the battery. Uh, so you want to use as high of a charge voltage as you can uh, without corroding or out, or out getting your battery too much. Uh, so I'm gonna have to keep an eye on everything and dial these numbers in since we're dealing with old batteries that probably have a bit of personality. Uh, but that's just long-term stuff that I'm gonna uh, keep an eye on. Uh, so there's a bit more parameters to set us uh, with the battery cutoff and stuff. We will have to see how the inverter behaves before setting these. Uh, like battery cutoff discharging when grid is available, 48 volts. That's, the inverter often sees below 48 volts if it's on the high load, uh, but 48 volts and an unloaded battery is basically empty. So this is, I don't like the lack of flexibility you get in this screen, uh, but uh, we'll have to see how it actually behaves. And my biggest concern is that you have no, uh, you seem to have no, uh, bulk charge timer setting or current setting, nothing. Uh, so yeah, gonna have to see what those values actually translate to. Uh, but all in all, the system's up and running and uh, we're gonna have to see what we go from here. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed in how little power the panels make uh, later in the evening. It's uh, uh, 5.30 right now. Uh, in the middle of summer, 26th of June, uh, so this is basically high summer, the best time of year to do this, and we're down to 450 watts. In fact, I think uh, the old system is probably, yeah, that's putting out uh, 600 watts almost uh, uh, for the time being. So those four dinky panels over there are putting out more of an entire uh, roof full of a barn does, but oh well, such is life. Uh, at least I do have some flexibility since, uh, yeah, uh, I'm definitely gaining something from the small system since it's uh, actually eight before me of a big system right now. But yeah, let's uh, go and have a look at the uh, power meter and see what that's up to. It, I think there's probably a tiny load on it since the inverter has such a high idle power which it seems to kind of just pull from whatever random power source it uh, desires, yeah, it's blinking there, so that means it is, uh, uh, there's power going through this, I don't know in which direction, it should not be feeding out, it's not allowed to, yeah, we're drawing 400 watts from the grid right now, and this seems to just kind of sit around that level, of 200 to 400 watts, like no matter what I do, so it's probably drawing just a tiny bit from the of overhead from the grid and uh, probably feeding a bit through as well because in the current operation mode uh, the inverter 
not being allowed to feed back into the grid has to be really careful uh, about its output voltage since it is running grid tight it has to be slightly lower than the grid so there needs to be a slight load on the grid to make sure power is flowing into the inverter rather than flowing out the only mode of regulation it has for that is uh, the output voltage so it's probably trying to keep a bit of load on the grid at all times uh, so it doesn't have to run in off-grid mode where it uh, disconnects from the grid entirely you do want to run in grid tied mode when you want uh, when you can because that will give you a bit of extra regulation ac accuracy since you have a very a low impedance uh, voltage source in the grid which will eat up lots of spikes and nasties that your loads might produce for instance your uh, fridge starting up is probably going to put a bit of a spike out on the grid as well even though you're running uh, quite a lot of power out of your inverter uh, and that's a good thing because the inverter does have a limit to how much peak current it can put out about 50 amps and many things have more than 50 amps of inrush so I don't mind that at all and I've got more uh, graffiti to put on all my stuff stickers everywhere I don't recall if I made a video about these either cut some holes in the lids for these centrals because uh, the switch is too fat <laughs> like you, you can't close it otherwise I don't know it's handy to just have this switch available at all times I don't mind that uh, so yeah, electrician guy was a super happy certifying all of this. He seems to have some faith in my work. So now we're basically in it for the long game. Uh, I'm gonna probably do some kind of battery uh, capacity test. I'm gonna just let it run uh, for a while and see how well it performs.